Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to explore the state switch action used with Motion Director that represents the change of an actor from one animated state to another. Each state contains its own idle loop along with trigger actions that are unique to the actor's current state. For example, the available actions while your character is seated will be different than those available while standing. Let's explore how we can create a set of customized actions including state changes by first setting up our scene. I'm going to start by dragging in this chair MD prop and align it with the bus stop bench here. If we enter into MD play mode, we can see the basic MD prop interaction with our actor. He will change from a standing state to a seated state and go into a seated idle. If we right click and drag a bench prop to the MD prop dummy, it will replace the mesh but maintain the functionality of the MD prop. It's recommended to ensure that set as surface is disabled for seat props, otherwise you may find your actor stepping up on the seat during the state switch animation. Do this for all elements of your MD prop. As you can see, we also need to adjust the height of our character's seated state here to conform to the height of the replacement mesh, so in the behavior settings section of the MD behavior panel, I'll click on add delete behavior to get started on our first action, sitting down, and edit it in the timeline. The best way to get this new mesh to work with other actors in the future is to go into Edit Structure and add a new Reach Target dummy for the hip. This will ensure that any actor's hip will be constrained to the new position we place the dummy at, so I'll be sure to place it higher up on the surface of the bench. To enable our reach constraint, let's go into the reach target tool and open the respective reach track in the timeline. At the frame where our actor is seated, I'll then constrain the hip to our prop mesh, being sure to choose the keep current pose option, and now we can go further into the hierarchy and find the reach dummy we added earlier. Be sure to have Maintain Offset selected here. We also need to do the same thing for the feet, since they will be a bit off due to the hip constraint. So I'll add some reach dummies for the feet as well, being sure to position them on the ground plane so that our actor's feet don't float or go into the ground. Place these dummies around ankle height, and then set the reach target for both feet. Again, do this at the frame where the feet are planted, and be sure to go into the prop hierarchy and select the dummies we just added. Now that we have all of our reach targets set up, we can edit the position of the hip dummy to avoid our actor breaking through the prop mesh when he's seated. You can also adjust the transition time for the reach constraint to more refined timing. Also important here is to go to the reach keyframe and disable the rotation option here to avoid affecting the original hip rotation. Once that's done, we need to use the edit motion layer tool to fix the position change of our limbs that resulted from the reach constraint that we just added. So when the elbows are just about planted on the thighs, I'll add a full body keyframe and then a few frames later, rotate the hip bones so that the elbows maintain that height instead of floating above the thighs. 
Edit motion layer adjustments with active constraints can be a bit tricky, so you may need to move and refine the positioning of other bones in combination. It's not very often that you can adjust a single bone and get ideal results. In this case, I'm also adjusting arms and elbows. When I'm done, I'll ensure my sit down action is selected, right click on my motion clip, then choose Select Collection Range by Selection. This will select that range in the Collect Clip track, where I can then right click and choose Overwrite Selected MD Behavior Motion to save my edits to that action. However, now you'll notice that as soon as our actor finishes the sitting down action and goes into regular seated idle, the arm position will return back to the awkward floating position, so we need to edit that action as well. The process here is the same, only this time we're going to edit the sit idle motion. We don't need new reach constraints here, so I can delete the existing keyframes in that track. To ensure that this seated idle transitions properly into our idle state, I need to add that action to our timeline as well. You can see that the reach keys from the motion exist throughout the timeline, which is what we want as it will affect the idle motion as well. For the idle motion clip, we can adjust the positioning of the actor using the Edit Motion Layer tool at the first frame of the clip. You may also want to click and drag the transition area at the beginning of the clip to refine the blending of the motion from the previous one, although here it's not too noticeable. Okay, now to complete the cycle, we need to do the same thing for the Stand Up transition action. With the stand up action, we want to release our constraints so that our actor is not constrained to the bench as he stands up. Do this at the frame where the actor is beginning his stand up action. In this case, we also need to refine the position of our end reach constraint key along with the duration of the transition to avoid the weird floating foot result. You can notice the difference between the right and left feet here. You may also find that other keyframe edits will affect subsequent keyframes. In this case, you may need to manually go in and delete edit motion layer keys for specific bones, in this case, our feet. When we're done, we can once again set our selection area to our edited clip and then overwrite the MD action. Now we have our completed transition cycle and we can have our actor accurately sit down and stand up on our modified MD prop bench. As with the main seated idle, you'll also need to ensure that these same edits are copied over to the sub idles as well. Start off by doing the same edits to the motion clip at the first frame of the sub idle using the Edit Motion Layer tool. Now, in this case, we only want to release the reach target on the right foot, as that's the one lifted up in this action. Then do the minor edits to refine the foot position on the left knee. When the right foot is planted, we can copy the original reach constraint keyframe and paste it again. Once again, repeat the process to overwrite and update the MD action. The ability to add reach dummies as part of your interactive MD prop animations 
means that you can use the same seating action on props of various heights. All you need to do is adjust the reach dummy positions and do some minor motion layer editing. This saves you a lot of time in the long run and allows you to utilize a single transition action on a variety of different props in different scenarios. That's it for this video guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.